Hi folks, Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Coming to you with another installment. Make sure you check back daily for my uh, updates. And I uh, want to talk to you about something that's real important, kind of a two-parter here, if you will. We're going to talk about customer meet and greet. The first part of this element is if you're a CEO, if you're a business person, even if you're a one-man shop operating a website, take a look from outside your company how the customer meet and greet takes place, how your customers are able to interact with your company, how efficient it is, how welcoming it is, does it invite people to want to come back and do business with you in the future. Now, if you're owning just a small business or you have a website, you know, get some of your friends to give you advice, take a look at your website, see how easy it is to navigate, see how welcoming it is, why would we want to come back, can they find the other aspects of your website, are they invited to the other aspects of your website, etc., etc. So, do that, but if you're if you own a corporation of any given size, two or three employees, one, sometimes one of the best things to do is to call in anonymously on the phone through the main line and you know see how you get going, see how things get transferred around. I used to have there were so many departments around me, and then I had two executive secretaries who usually had to get through to get to me. Um, so you know I'd call in and see how hard it was to eat, try and get to me. Sometimes my friends would take and do it. I'd sit beside them and go, okay, well, let's see what see how my company's doing. It's really important to get outside your corporation and try and look at it from the outside. And we've talked about that in one other video that I have. <clears throat> but in this case, get transferred through the systems. One of the worst things that ever used to happen to me is I would call my corporation. Someone would be talking in the back, and they'd just hang up the phone because they realized that they'd been yibbering, yabbering, and they hadn't talked to the person on the phone. Uh, that's like the worst thing you can do is hang up on the CEO. Um, one of the other things I used to hate is you call and you'd hear this. You'd hear the click and then, yeah, uh, tell John in the back there that he needs to go uh, take in, uh, yeah, move that shipment and that pallet. And, oh, hello, um, hello, welcome to, yeah, hi, what do you need? You know, something like that, okay? Or worst case scenario, you don't tell me what company I've just called. I hate that. That is like one of my pet peeves. It'd be like, It'd be they they go hello. I'd be like, uh, who, what company is this that I'm calling? Oh oh, this is uh, X Y Z com company. Okay, it's real important you pay attention to what your secretaries are doing. That first person in the meet and greet process with your customers makes all the difference in people's perception of your company. That's why Walmart, when you first go there, they have the greeter there. He greets you with a smile, maybe pat you on the back, maybe shakes your hand, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He wants to set a tone for how you're going to perceive the rest of your experience with Walmart in your time that you're there, and he wants to put a positive spin tone on it and let you know that they care. That's kind of what Walmart is trying to tell you. We care. We're glad you came by our store. You're just not some person who's walking in and out. We're actually going to touch you or contact you and say, we're very happy that you took the time to come by our store. I think that's really important, being able to touch clients and let them know that you care. Now, one other thing you need to take and do is you need to make sure you hire uh, people-friendly people -friendly employees, okay? You've got to find people that work for you that are people-friendly, especially if they're in the customer service area of your business, especially your receptionists, especially your people that are working with your customers or dealing with your customers. They have to be people-oriented. If they're not people-oriented, they should not be in those departments, okay? It's very important. Your secretary who answers that front phone line has got to know that she has the most important job at answering the phone or greeting the people that come through the door in the most positive manner, in the most succinct manner, and being able to deliver a positive impression, very first and lasting impression of your company. Because, as we all know, first impressions make a difference. Now, when you look at successful companies that hire people-friendly employees, you look at Southwest Airlines. <laughs> Their airlines are a lot of fun. I used to keep a home in Nevada, uh, in Vegas, and I used to work in uh, Utah, Salt Lake, and so I would fly every weekend home and then go to work in Utah flying back. And we flew uh, Southern, Southwest Airlines the majority of the time. Always fun. It, it was almost kind of an adventure to see what kind of presentation they were going to put on next. They were going to, you know, whatever weird spin they were going to put on the FAA thing. So, uh, and then I would go on the Delta flight, and you just realize how boring and monotonous it was. Not a real knock against Delta, but I mean, you'd sit there and the person would be like, I'm the... You know what I mean, okay? 
you'd just be like, oh, great, this is going to be boring. You know, usually you could joke around with the Southwest Airlines stewardesses, um, you know, the United the Delta and all those other people, you know, they're doing their business. So having a fun environment is real important. Zappos, when you take a look at how Zappos hires people, if you're familiar with them, Zappos.com, they uh, usually make a real strong effort to hire good quality people and people that are kind of a little outrageous, a little fun, a little a little maybe, uh, you know, not stuffy. So that makes a real big difference in the quality of their customer service. And when you look at how successful they are as a company, that is one of the hallmarks they claim is a point of their business, success. Uh, Google is another one of them. Google, as you probably saw recently, the interview, things are going around. They definitely are looking for some out-of-the-box thinkers. Nordstrom's is another one. Uh, TGI Friday is another one where they hire people that are people-oriented. So hiring people that are people-oriented in your business is real important. And I think it's also important from a factor that it helps the morale of your company. It helps people get along. So take a look at that. The second part of this conversation that I wanted to have with you today uh, is get your employees to connect with your customers, to focus on them, and get them to care. How many times have you and I gone into a business place and we're standing there ready to buy, we've maybe waited in line for a little bit, we've got our purchase together, and we're good to go. We bought our products. You're standing there and there's some employee that's busy talking to another employee about some stupid thing. I mean, usually it has nothing to do with the business. They're talking about what they did last Friday, what are the cases. And so you're standing there, and here's what you're seeing. Yeah, hey, Margaret, uh, yeah, yeah, let's get together. It's Friday. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, them saints, uh, you know, whatever and, and stuff. And, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, just let me know, you know. <laughs> you're just like, hey, I'm your customer. I'm right here. I want to grab those people by the freaking head and go, I'm your customer, I've got your freaking money here, shut up and do my and do my do my thing. Okay? It's horrible customer service. Yet I see it time and time and time again. Uh, it's real famous when I go into uh, gas stations, okay? The other worst thing that I, I, I hate seeing is this. I come up to the counter, I'm ready to buy shit, and some guy going like this. Oh yeah, hang on, one second. Uh uh. Okay. Yeah, that's BS, okay? That's BS. That should not take place in a business. If you own a company, get your security tapes that you're running from your front business section or business counter, whatever it is. See what your employees are doing. Measure them by how they connect with your customer, how much they look them in the eye, and tell them they care about them coming in. Because if you don't, you're telling your customers that you really don't give a crap about them and that they're bothering you because that's what that tells me. If you're busy texting or you're an employee who's having a conversation, I'm interrupting you as a customer because you're having your conversation, you're having your text. So I would admonish you if you own a business or your management position that takes and oversees this, take a look at how that front line is interacting with your business, okay? With employees, I want them looking people in the eye, I want them connecting people, and I want them telling them that they care. They don't have to exactly say that, but to say that they care, to thank them, and want them to come back into the business. So, <clears throat> that's a real important aspect. I mean, would you come back to a business where no one really cares and you get ignored half the time? I mean, I, I felt so many times buying something in a, co a company that I'm just, I, I'm taking up their time and I'm really just an annoyance. So. Take a look at that for your business. See how people receive. Send your friends, your neighbors, your relatives into your company. See what their experience is and have them tell you. So, very important. Anyway, thanks for coming by the Chris Voss Show. I'm Chris Voss. Thank you. Bye-bye.